government is setting out plans for a massive expansion in wind-generated electricity. Supply one in six UK households by 2010. I'm delighted to celebrate what even a few years ago would have been the most unlikely of partnerships, Empower and Greenpeace, and their inauguration of the North Hoyle offshore wind farm. Rolling out this first large-scale offshore wind venture is a highly significant step towards achieving Britain's renewables goal. There is no shortage of wind in the UK. On this map, red indicates a high wind potential. So it's no exaggeration to say Britain is Europe's windiest country. An unlimited natural power that can be harnessed to produce clean energy. RWE N Power is a leading integrated UK energy business. For over a decade, their wind business, N Power Renewables, has been operating wind farms to produce clean electricity for thousands of customers. Until now, all of these wind farms have been land based. But imagine the power that could be generated by a wind farm far out to sea, where the wind blows more consistently, unhindered by geography. Following extensive research, N Power Renewables chose North Hoyle as the site for their first offshore wind farm, the first major wind farm to be built in UK waters. North Hoyle is situated eight kilometers off the coast of North Wales, close to Rill and Prestatyn. The water is relatively shallow out um, to a considerable distance from the coast. There's a good, good connection at Rill and ecologically um, there are no material um, adverse effects from siting a wind turbine, a wind farm at this location. For 30 years, Peter Musgrove has worked as a leading figure in wind technology. Since he started his research, Peter has seen a huge shift in people's perceptions about wind power. I first got involved in wind power back in 1974, um, soon after the first oil crisis in 1973, which raised people's concerns about how we would meet our future energy needs. A few people thought that wind could make a significant contribution to our electricity needs. The Danes have shown that it can. They already provide nearly 20% of their electricity needs from wind turbines. We in the UK are targeting to get 20% of our electricity from renewables by 2020. Most of that will come from wind, and most of that wind will be up from offshore wind farms. Back in 1974, the development of modern turbines was very much in its infancy. Since then, we've seen the development of efficient and reliable machines, and it took us about until 1990 to get to that stage. Since then, turbines have got larger and more cost-effective and more reliable. Construction of North Hoyle's foundations began in the spring of 2003. The turbines were supplied by Vestas, the world's leading turbine manufacturer. At their factory in Scotland, hundreds of Vestas engineers assemble the many turbines for North Hoyle. Twenty-ton sheets of steel are welded into tubular sections and joined together to form the towers. The turbine houses, or nacelles, are also assembled in the factory. Contained within these are the generators, transformers and cutting-edge computing power needed to control every one of the turbine's functions. The blades too are manufactured by Vestas at their other European factories. Back on site, Vestas manages the installation of the turbines. This is construction on a gigantic scale. Combined, the two tower sections are 50 meters long and weigh 140 tons. They need to be big. They are designed to support the weight of the 100-ton nacelle and rotor. With such massive loads, this is a slow and precise operation. Even after darkness falls, construction on site continues.
The V80 turbines used at North Hoyle are a triumph of modern engineering. The culmination of almost 30 years of development. They stand 110 meters tall to the tip of the highest blade. Via the internet, the turbines can be controlled from anywhere in the world. Even at North Hoyle, the turbines have to contend with some ferocious conditions from time to time. To ensure smooth operation all year round, the turbines are maintained by specially trained maintenance crews. A full-time job on a farm this size. For these local crews, as well as everyone else involved in the construction of North Hoyle, health and safety is paramount. For such a challenging construction project, all offshore crew need to be fully qualified in sea survival techniques. With the turbines installed, they are connected to the electricity network. Cabling links the turbines together before running back, buried under the seabed, to shore and onto the substation at Rill. The clean power generated by North Hoyle supplies NPower Juice customers as part of a pioneering green electricity scheme developed by NPower in partnership with Greenpeace. Greenpeace set up Juice in partnership with NPower because we wanted to give everyone the opportunity to help accelerate the development of offshore wind using their electricity bill. In Britain, people are now able to subscribe to clean energy programs such as NPower Juice. Under such schemes, every unit of electricity used is replaced by a unit from a wind farm. The wind farm at North Hoyle is designed to withstand the elements for over 20 years. During that time, it will continue to provide clean, green energy for thousands of NPower Juice subscribers across Britain. This wind farm, and others like it, will also provide another benefit for Britain. Employment. As well as the local maintenance crews, there were 30 companies involved in the North Hoyle project, representing hundreds of jobs. Vestas alone employs, on a permanent basis, almost 900 people in the UK. So, what does the future hold for offshore wind power? There is already a massive uptake of renewable energy across the world, with Europe leading the way. Britain, in the heart of Europe, has the best resource in Europe for offshore wind, and the North Hoyle Wind Farm is at the cutting edge of that development. North Hoyle consists of 30 turbines generating up to 60 megawatts of electricity. Clean electricity that benefits the environment. This farm alone will prevent the release of over 160,000 tons of the main greenhouse gas, carbon dioxide. With continued government backing, the future looks good for offshore wind farms.